Good morning. Good to see everybody today. Great day to come worship the Lord together. We're glad you're here, especially those of you who are guests. We have a number of guests with us today, and we're thrilled about that. And if you would, please fill out a guest card and just leave it on the pew or put it in the collection box back there in the back. We would appreciate that very much. If you've not gotten a communion cup, please raise your hand for us and we'll get one to you. And in a little while after we're into our service and uh, we get ready to have our lesson today, when the song leader has everybody stand up, you will see a little line of young people ages two through seven going to children's Bible time. And if you have a child in that age group, uh, you're welcome to have them go. They'll have appropriate Bible teaching while we have a lesson here in the auditorium. So uh, we just uh, are happy you're here. I did have one order of housekeeping. A cell phone was found in the women's restroom. So if you're missing the cell phone, please come and see me after the service out front and I'll get it back to you. As we begin, I'm going to read a passage from the 34th Psalm. And the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Let's all worship together. Good morning. I'm glad y'all are here. I'm the backup this morning, and Eric does a much better job than I do for my deficiencies this morning. Let's sing a worship. this morning will be how great is our God in both verses. 
Many times when we sing the hymn just before the prayer, I have to say to myself, all you need to do is just get up there and say, in Jesus' name, amen. How great is our God. Let's pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you. And uh, as Jesus' disciples asked Jesus, to teach them to pray, Lord, I'll never stop asking you to help me know how to pray better uh, to you and through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that you have given us grace and mercy as we go through this life. And many times, uh, uh, we do not do what is right in our sight, and Lord, we confess these things. At this time, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of sin, and we ask you, Lord, to create within us a forgiving heart that forgives those who have treated us uh, in not-so-kind ways sometimes, but help us to forgive and forget so that our prayer at this time and all other times will be heard by you. Help us, God, to live in peace as we walk this path called life on earth. God, we have so much to be thankful for. Help us, God, to realize the smallest of blessings to the greatest blessings. Thank you, God, for the food we have to eat, which is most of the time in excess of what we need. And God, help us to be mindful of our fellow man, not just friends and family, but those who we do not know, Help us to be mindful and share our blessings when it is possible. God, lead us to those who need a helping hand. And Lord, we thank you for the men and women that in the past have served in the military of this country and right now are serving, and most of them are separated from their families and are in not the most pleasant of places. And Lord, we also thank you for the men and women that are in law enforcement in this day and time of lawlessness, lawlessness and disrespect for the law, we pray for their protection, Lord. And 
God, you are aware of those in our spiritual family here at Central who are suffering from some serious illness at this time. You know the names of those that are on our minds at this time and have been on our minds. And you know that in our private times of prayer that we call them by name. In this prayer, God, we just ask that you offer safety. We say, pray that you'll offer peace and cures and help the doctors and other people that are taking care of them to have patience and kindness and to lead them to a helpful life. We not only pray, Lord, for the physically ill, but for those who have never confessed Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and those that have, might have drifted away, we pray, Lord, that they would come to a realization of the need of their souls. God, we pray for this country in which we're blessed to live and earn a living for our families, and we have freedom, and most of all, God, freedom to worship you as your word tells us. And our Heavenly Father, it appears that there are movements that are attempting to pull this country farther and farther away from you and Jesus Christ. God, we ask that you reach down and take a hold, Lord, before it's too late. And whatever we may have to go through for there to be a turnaround and people coming closer to you, and especially leaders in our government, coming closer to you and doing your will and your word, Lord, uh, we'll just go through it. God, we pray for husbands and we pray for wives and children and um, that they will love you and Jesus and that they will bring up those children, those families in such a way that they would remember it when they reach those decision-making years in, in their lives and that they will choose mates that will help them to stay within the bounds of your holy word. Dear God, we've asked a lot in this prayer, but we know you're always there. We know that you're willing to listen. And Lord, as, uh, as humble as I try to make this prayer, I just hope I said the right things. And dear God, we pray that you'd keep us in your mighty hand till the storms of this life pass us by. In Christ's name, amen. As we prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I
Yeah, was there anyone that did not have the emblems yet that need them? As we uh, gather around the table this morning, as we do every first day of the week, to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our focus scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 32. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor, without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands love your wives as they do their own bodies. For he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will be joined to become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I'm applying it to Christ and the church. We think about this scripture reading, and we normally think about marriage, and I think that's exactly what is the context here. But it's comparing that to what Christ did for the church. We're told to be subject, wives are told to be subject to your husbands, but we can also go back a ways, just a few verses up to verse 21, it says, be subject one to another in reverence of Christ. Definitely when we think about subjection, we think about a lot of things come to our minds, but what Jesus did, he subjected himself to the Father's will. He had the decision, he had the choice. As he prayed in the garden, he said that, Father, take this away from me. Take this any other way, but your will be done, not mine. So he subjected himself to the will of the Father. And he does that with a sacrificial love. A love that when we think about the love that Jesus gave for us, and as we're reading about here for the church, it's a love that is unconditional. And he did that as we read in Romans 5th chapters, verse 7 and 8, that talks, just a paraphrase, paraphrase that anyone would die for a, a good man, but Christ died for all of us at the right time. And it was a purifying love, as he re- kept on reading there. It was one that, and I think it has reference to baptism here, an inference to baptism. But he did this so that the church would be spotless, and pure without wrinkle, just as we consider a bride presenting herself to her husband. The spots and the wrinkles coming from the sin of the world, the sprinkling of the blood, the blood that will flow from his body, the blood that cleanses us, that cleanses the church, that cleanses us and makes it pure and acceptable to him. And it also talks about a caring love, a love that cares, just as a husband is to care for his wife, Christ cares and loves for the church. And finally, a love that's unconditional, a love that is unbreakable. When we think about marriage, it says here, let no man tear it apart. And it talks about Christ's love is an unbreakable love. Jesus died for all of us, and his blood and his death upon the cross cleanses us. And we have so much to be thankful. And as we remember him today, let's remember the sacrifice that he went through. Remember his life. And do what we do our part also to be as he was and forgive others and to be a, um, be a submission, submit ourselves to one another. Let us give thanks for the bread. A gracious, merciful Heavenly Father, As we gather around this table to remember you, to remember your life, remember your death, and to remember your resurrection, Lord, we just thank you so much for your willingness, for your love, 
your love for us, your love for your, the church, an example for us to, to, as we live our lives and our marriages, but also as we look to you. Lord, we thank you so much that you've given us, and as we think about this bread, which represents your body, your body that hung upon the cross, the body that was bruised, the head and thorns pierced your head, and then sword that pierced your side. All this done out of your love for us, your love for the church, and your love for God. Thank you, Lord, so much. And we pray as we partake of this, we do this in a manner and a pleasing your sight. Lord, we thank you. Bless it and bless us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And if you prepare to take the fruit of the vine, it's always been an interesting thing that blood was used for cleansing. And we think about the Old Testament, how the priest would take the blood and sprinkle it on the altar when he did their, um, for the remission of their sins each time they went into the Holy of Holies. And Christ's blood does that for us. It cleanses us of our sins. Let's think about that as we give thanks for the fruit of vine. Heavenly Father, as we continue our memorial and our remembrance of you today, we thank you so much, Lord, for this fruit of the vine, which represents the blood that was shed upon the cross. Lord, we ask you to bless it. Help us to be thankful for your grace, for your mercy, and because of this blood that was shed, cleanses us of our sins, Lord. Be with us, God, guard, and direct us. In your son's name we pray, amen. Separate and apart from the Lord's Supper, we have a privilege 
and an honor to be able to give back to God. We just uh, celebrated a holiday in this country called Thanksgiving, where we gather together as family and friends, and we're just thankful for what we have. And we are so blessed spiritually, aren't we? God has given us so much, not just our physical things that we have, but it all comes from him, but also our, our spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ. And at this time, we take this opportunity that we can give back to him in a small way. If you're visiting with us, we're, it's not a solicitation of funds from you. If you can just leave your visitor's card completed with us, we have a record of your attendance. This is something we do here at our congregation for the support of the work here. Uh, we will not be passing the plate around, but there are uh, boxes in the back where you can place your donations back there, or I, there's still availability online. But let's just thank God for what he's done for us. Gracious God, merciful God, you have blessed us so richly, Heavenly Father, both spiritually and physically. You, you, we live in a country where we, we don't want, Lord, and we've been given so much. We thank you so much for the blessings you've given us physical. We thank you so much for our health. We thank you so much for the congregation that we have here, the ability we have to be able to come here and worship you freely. We thank you for the leadership here. We thank you for the members here and everyone that works together to, to lead our lives and, and be closer to you and, and for that final goal we have to be with you in heaven. Heavenly Father, most of all, we thank you for the gift of your son that we've just remembered. We thank you for his willingness to die for us. And at this time, we ask you to be with us as, as we give back a small portion to you, something that we've earned. Be with us. Help us to do this always in a manner pleasing in our, your sight. Lord, we thank you and love you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. If you'll join me in standing, this is a song before the lesson. As we, uh, as we sing, um, this is the time you'll see that cute little parade heading towards class uh, for those children. We'll sing uh, How Deep the Father's Love. How deep the
morning. morning. If you're asking yourself what is Edward doing up here this morning, I'm asking myself the same thing. <laughs> I get, I get, I, I know y'all can't see it a lot, but I, I'm so nervous some mornings when I lean singing and I'm sitting there and my, my leg is going and, and then I can feel the, my, my fingers tremble a little bit. I'm going to tell you, I'm sitting down on the end down there, I've got myself really still, but Chase is over just banging on the seat with his leg. I don't know if he's nervous for me or what. Uh, this has worked out pretty good because Wayne's supposed to be speaking for us, he's sick. Uh, but that's not the reason I'm up here. I'm up here because Trudy made me. <laughs> and it's not because she was one way to be sick. Uh, as y'all all know, my brother died not too long ago, and I, we was in the room the day he died, and one of his sons says, Ed, my mom wants you to do the, the service. So I said yes immediately, because I never say no. And after thinking about it a while and getting into another conversation, I said, well, don't he have a, a favorite preacher? And two of his sons go like this here at me. So, I don't know. I preach over to prison all the time, but it's, it's, I'm not near as nervous up there. I don't know why. So, Trudy heard the lesson, and she wants me to, to do that lesson. So, it's, I'm going to tell you a story about my brother. And then we're going to go to Ephesians 4, 2nd chapter. Ephesians 2nd chapter, 1 through 5 is what we're going to look at. So, this is my brother. And as y'all can tell, I got all the looks. <laughs> This, this is a jacket. I'm going to tell you about this jacket. Now, I'll go over to see him about a month and a half, two months ago. I forget exactly how long it was. He was sick. He comes out in the jacket. It's not really cold enough to have a jacket on, but he comes out in this jacket. This jacket, I look at it. As soon as he comes out the door and starts down the steps, I said, you got to be kidding me. I sure wear a jacket like this. Two more pieces of duct tape on this jacket, and you can call it a duct tape jacket. Um... My brother had some things he really loved, and that's what we're going to talk about with some of these things. My brother would call me on, on, on during the week sometimes, and I would look at my watch, and he would say, what you doing Friday? And I'd say, okay, it's the second Friday of the month. It's an auction at weeks on the other side of town. I guess that's where I'm going this week with him, because he would go. So I stopped by. Thursday after he died, I was getting ready for an auction the next week, I believe. And so I stopped by and took a picture of what I thought he might look at. He would, he would, look, he would go straight to the salvage line. If you don't know anything about the auction, the auction's got all the junk that most people don't want anymore, and that's why they're selling it out of auction. I send trucks over all the time after I wore them completely out. They have to come over with a trailer and drag them over there because I can't give them a run anymore. But my brother would head straight to the salvage line. There's, well, there's a line over there that call the salvage line. There's all kinds of tractors on it. If you can see that Ford that's like just on the other side there, that's what most of them look like. This one doesn't look too bad, so my brother probably would have looked at it. Most of them are not running. Most of them have been worn completely out and used very good. And there are pieces of junk in my eyes. My brother would, would go look at this one. That's it again on another angle. These here go on the front. These, oh man, I'm seeing my point for you. Those right there. Those, uh, the screens right there. Those go on the front of the truck. Everything, every tractor, everything's been piled up here on the back because the tractor's been wild. It have not only had a seat on it anymore. My brother would look at this. Something that's completely wild. This one he might skip by <laughs> because it's just a little too far gone, or it might be that it's a Ford. Not sure. There's all the pictures of the, the one that, uh, that we looked at that he probably would have uh, looked at pretty close. Now he would take this thing and he would, he would look at it. He would walk around it, kind of like Jody did the other day when he walked around there when he said Ford got in the, in the car and he kicked all the doors off of it. My brother would walk around it, he would look at it, he would poke at it, he would prod, he would push this, he would push that. He would pull the dipstick out, he would get it on his fingers, he would see if there was anything in the oil, he would smell it to see if there was any antifreeze in it. You know, he's looking to see if he can save this track. 
That's exactly what he would be doing. And he would look around and he would say, interesting. This is one that's at his house. Um, I went to his house later and I took some pictures. This is one that they're evidently working on. That's another one that they're working on somewhat. This one here is too far gone. I remember when he first got this one though, he bought it at an auction somewhere. And he brought me over to it. He had it up there in the shop. He was taking it apart. He was cleaning it up. He says, hey, look at this mark right here. He said, I'm pretty sure this is the tractor that you and I drove when we worked over at the Joneses. I'm not sure if he's going to save this one or not. This is one that he took. Remember the first one that we looked at? This is one he took from that stage to this stage. I want you to look, this tractor is running, this tractor is useful, this tractor is something that he can use. Uh, but I want you to look at uh, even the paint job is perfect because he didn't hardly ever put anything out that wasn't perfect. But just that it's still running. I want you to look at his dog. This is his favorite dog. He loved this dog. This dog went with him everywhere. And when I say everywhere, he went with him everywhere. He would, uh, I believe the dog even sleep, slept with him. I'm not sure. But he loved this dog. If you see this dog's uh, left eye, there's no eye there. That eye's gone. This dog's name is Casper. Casper sinned one day. Casper sinned by getting out of his yard into the neighbor's yard and into the neighbor's chicken pen. And the owner of the chicken pen became judge, jury, and executioner with a pistol and shot him, I think it was three times. Now, nobody can deny that that dog deserved to die. So he was, uh, he was shot. And my brother tried to save him a little bit. My brother took him over to Shans and there's when he was picking him up from Shans. I'm not sure exactly how, I'm not sure exactly how much money he's been on this dog, but it was in the thousands saving this dog. But my brother loved this dog. My brother was not willing to let this dog die. Now, well, Linda showed me this picture. That's his wife, my sister-in-law. She showed me this picture and she said, that's his two loves of his life. The dog, and if you'll look, he's in the cage of a track, of a bulldozer, actually. He's in a cage of a bulldozer. His two loves. My brother planted trees for a living, mostly with bulldozers. And I told her, I says, I think it's three because there's that jacket in there. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see, my brother was not willing to let a lot of things go. I want you to look with me at Ephesians. At Ephesians of, of the second chapter, there in the first verse. First verse says, once you were dead because of your disobedience, and your many sins. I want to tell you, Casper was dead because of his sins. And to tell you the truth, if Casper would have been my dog, he probably would have been dead. I probably wouldn't have saved Casper, but my brother was not willing that he, he could, would do that. Once you were dead because of your disobedience, Paul was talking to the Ephesians here, and he's talking to them that they were once dead because of what? Their sins, there are many sins he talks about. Um, dead, rusted, unusable, on the salvage line, and just dead. That's where those tractors are that my brother would go rescue and rebuild. He had more than one of those things. But here we see that Paul's talking to them about their sins, about their sins have made, have made them dead and that they are, are worn out because of them. There's a song by Zach Williams. It's called Fear is a Liar. And in his song, he, he talks about, when he, when he uses the word he, he's talking about fear, but he's also using the word fear and he as the devil. He says in the song, this is the first verse of the song, when he told you you're not good enough, when he told you you're not right, when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight, when he told you you're not worthy, when he told you you're not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful, the 
that you'll never be enough. Second verse goes along with some of the same things. When he told you you were trouble, you will forever be alone. When he told you you should run away, you'll never find a home. When he told you you were dirty, then you should be ashamed. When he told you you could be the one that grace could never change. Speaking here of all the many things that, uh, that, that sometimes just pile up on you in your life. The many sins that have eaten us up, the many sins that have wore us out, the many sins that have put us in places where we sometimes feel like some of the words of this song, that we're not good enough, that we're not strong enough, that we're not right, that we'll never find a home, that we'll always be alone. That's what Paul said there when he says, your many sins. The second verse says, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. I have a question. Have you ever lived in sin? You ever lived just like everybody else? That's what he's saying here. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world. Just like the rest of the world. Ever lived under the ruler of the unseen world? Devil ever been the one that's been your, your king many times? You ever been like Casper and just snuck out of the yard every once in a while? To the chicken pen? Guess what? Paul tells us here that all of us used to live that way. All of us used to live that way. Not some of us. Not these on this side. Not these on this side. Not just you. Not just the other one. He says all of us used to live this way. Well, look at some of, the, some of the words that he uses in the rest of it here. Following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature, by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Ever thought of that word nature? Following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. If you look our word up in the dictionary, part of the definitions that you're going to find is, a, is one of them here says, a creative, a creative and controlling force in the universe. Isn't that what nature is? Isn't nature what happens just because it's supposed to happen? Isn't nature what goes on around us when man sometimes tries to make it a little bit different? I, um, every year I get a little amazed at the um, at, at all of them when they, when they try to determine how many storms we're going to have this year and exactly where they're going to go where they're going to hit and then when one storm's coming through how many different times they'll change their mind in which direction it's going I just kind of smile because it's God's nature God's going to send it where God wants it to go and if I'm in that path I'm in the nature of God. But he's talking here that it's our sinful nature. Is it nature for sin, man to sin? The second part of that is an inner force or the sum of such forces in an individual, such as instinct. You know why Casper got out of his yard and got into the chickens and was getting the chickens? Because that's his nature. That's what dogs do. You can take a wild animal and you can, you can tame it and you can raise it and you can do all these things, wonderful things with it. But, but guess what? When the right smell comes along or the right time of year or the right age of that animal comes around, its nature is going to take over. Its nature is going to take over. And that's what happened with the Casper. 
That is what we mean sometimes when we say the devil made me do it. It's just a nice way to say I, I couldn't help it. That it was just the nature there and here I am. I couldn't help it. I had, a, I had one, of my, one of my kids one time was sitting at the dinner table and his sister, he was in kindergarten and his sister was like, like in third grade and she's telling him for doing something and he just finally drops his head and says, I can't be good all the time. <laughs> that, that's that sinful nature that creeps up in us sometimes, you know. Uh, that, that's the reason that we push against people sometimes when they push on us. And we forget about what Jody's been teaching us for the last quarter in Romans the 12th chapter of how, how a Christian ought to do it and not do that. We forget that Jesus told us that when we get slapped on one cheek, we get slapped on the other. Because what do we do when we get slapped on the cheek? We retaliate with the right cross. Okay, that's me, that's you, that's everyone, that's everybody. I love this next verse. I, I love it, I love what it does. It lets me know that I'm not alone. This tells me that all of us did this. But the next verse is, is the best verse. The first two words there, but God, are the best two words in the whole Bible, in my opinion, but God. I want you to think back to the song here. When everybody's telling you that you're not good enough, when everybody tells you you're not right, when everybody tells you you're not strong enough, when everybody tells you that you're not worthy, that you're not loved, you're not beautiful. You'll never be enough. And you may be the one that God cannot save. Basically is what he says there to give you that. But then you flip to this verse here where it says, but God. God's got other plans. God's got other plans. This is the best two words in the Bible. People have other plans for you in their lives. The devil has plenty of plans for you. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead it is only by God's grace that you have been saved have you ever felt like that you're too far gone have you ever felt like that, uh, as in our story here, that you have been worn out all your life and that you're just too far gone, that you're too deep into sin, that you can't come out of sin? Have you ever felt like that you've been the one that's been sent to the auction to be auctioned off because all you're good for is scrap? Because well, that's basically what that salvage line does. Most of them buy it for the scrap. They get a few parts off of it, and here we go. Not too many people buy it and say, I'm going to make that thing work again. Ever felt that way? Ever felt like that you're at the auction and you're on that salvage line? But God, be patient for your sake. In 2 Peter 3, verse 9, the Lord is really being slow about his promise, as some men think, or some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. If you go to King James Version or some of the other verses, it'll say the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to you were. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's being patient for your sake. For your sake. There's a passage in uh, Lamentation. The passage in Lamentation 3, 22 and 23 says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Some other versions say his mercies are new 
every morning. Let's just stop and think about that. His mercies are new every morning. You know, we go out and we buy a new something all the time. Uh, we'll, we'll take a car, for example. We go out and we buy us a brand new car. I want you to think about how long the materials of that car has been in this world. Forever. Ever since God created the earth. Nothing's new under the sun, so the psalm um, Ecclesiastes writer says. Nothing new under the sun. I want you to look at this here. It says that God can make his mercies new every morning. Every morning. How is it that Ephesians told us that we're going to be saved? What's it by? By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. Mercies of every morning. Are you used up? Worn out? No good? Useless. Too far gone? Found yourself on that salvage line that we've been talking about? Well, that's what the devil wants you. The devil wants you to fill all these things. The devil wants you to feel that you've been used up, that you're worthless, that you are an outcast. The devil wants you to find yourself on that salvage line. The devil wants you to know that you're just a piece of scrap that's fixed to be sold. But there's a God up in heaven. Rich in love and rich in mercy. And he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I want you to know that my brother would take a few things and he'd make them better, such as this, this one tracker. He took his dog and he saved him. He, took, he chose the things that he wanted to. God will outbid the devil on that side of life for you. Sometimes when you go to an auction, you uh, I watch one of the other van, all the prices are way up there. Sometimes they'll send somebody in there just to get the price up. He'll bid for it, knowing that you want it, so that you'll go above him and raise the price up. God won't let the devil outbid you without outbid him. He'll remove the rust from us. He'll clean us up. He'll remove your sins. He'll rebuild your life. He'll restore the unrestorable. This is our lesson today. But God. My, my brother could take him, take him do a, a lot of good things, and my brother was very patient with a lot of things. He was so slow in doing anything. I would come home from those auctions and I would look at my wife and I would say, you know, he just he just goes and buys this junk that I wouldn't buy and it's worthless and useless. And then you would go over a few months later, maybe even a year or two later, whatever he bought would be, would be working. But God can do that with us. God can do that with our lives. All we have to do is come to him. All we have to do is say, I want to get off that salvage line. I want to be made new again. There's one in the audience who is subject to our gospel call, God's gospel call. Won't you come all together and stand this
Great job, Edwin. Thank you so much. Wonderful lesson. And again, we thank you all for being here today, especially those of you who are guests. We hope you can come back whenever you have the opportunity or are in the area. If you're traveling, we wish you Godspeed. I know we have a lot of folks uh, leaving today, going to be on the road. So uh, uh, may the Lord be with you. And, uh, and wherever you go, visit the congregation of the Lord's people. We're great to have everybody here today. If you've not already gotten an announcement sheet, please pick one up as you leave. Uh, this morning, I do have a, a couple things to add to that. Uh, first of all, we're sad to announce that uh, Jim Nolan's brother, Bob, passed away uh, a day or two ago. And so please keep uh, his mother, Martha, and uh, of course, uh, Jim in your prayers and all of his family. Also, Jim is undergoing some medical issues, so please keep Jim in your prayers for that reason as well. Uh, Brother Vipple Rye called and asked that we remember his nephew, Ronnie, who lives in New Zealand. Uh, Ronnie fell about three floors onto a concrete uh, pad and is in the in ICU with uh, multiple broken bones and other injuries. So please keep Ronnie in your prayers as well. December is right around the corner, literally. We have one more month to read through Proverbs. If you've not done that yet, if you've fallen behind or anything, now's a great time to start up. Uh, just Wednesday morning, start with Proverbs 1 and read one chapter each day. And uh, that will make you wiser and help you in this life. Remember, we will be worshiping tonight at 6 p.m. You're all invited back for that worship time. We have classes on Wednesday evening for all ages and also a Thursday morning class for adults. And then, of course, next Sunday morning, you're all welcome to come back and be with us again. And this, this weekend, this week, we've been thinking most about thanks, I think. And let's just keep that right on through the rest of the year. Every morning, give God thanks for all he has done for us. Brother? We'll close with the uh, first and last verse of Abide With Me.
Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day. And Lord, we, we come to you just as we are. We are so thankful for this church, and we're thankful for this time that we've had to gather together to worship you. We pray, Lord, that it has been pleasing to you. Grateful for our lesson this morning, and, and we ask, Lord, that we, we can see more clearly our worth to you. And Lord, help us to show you your worth to us through our actions and through the things that we do and say. We ask that you comfort uh, in loss, that you heal in sickness, and Lord, that you just continue to wrap your arms around those who need it. As we leave today, keep us safe and watch over us in all things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.